Skal vi lige have fundet på So today we are uh, doing another cold flow on the next rocket. Last weekend we did one and uh, there was a few minor issues that we had to resolve. Uh, one of the issues was the, uh, the weighing of the rocket. So when we tank the rocket with liquid oxygen, we weigh the rocket to know how much we filled on. And uh, it's very important that the load cell, that the force on the load cell is completely vertical. Otherwise it measures wrong, simply. Uh, so right now you can see behind me the guys, they're just uh, adjusting the load cell. To, uh, to bring it in to, to give a, a complete vertical push on the load cell. And so we have minimized the, uh, the discrepancy, uh, the error, to, uh, to about two kilos right now. And we're just fine tuning it to get it even better than that. Um, last weekend the, uh, the discrepancy was plus minus 15 kilos. So it's a lot better today. Now, uh, when we have done this, then we will uh, hook up the rockets to its electronics and uh, then we will try to operate all the valves to do just a final check of those. Then we'll fill it with uh, liquid nitrogen. Then we'll leave it to sit for about half an hour to let it soak. And then we'll test the main valves to see if they will open, or at least the, uh, the locks valve to see if it will open when it's uh, minus 190 degrees or so. So that's really the, uh, the program for today. Total flow test and, uh, and system test of uh, the rocket. 29, 36, 39, 38. Så jeg hører 22 til 43. Nå, men det er da omkring halvdelen af det, vi havde sidst. Hvis I må gøre gas, så står der ikke mere på os. Okay, we're just doing a, uh, a calibration of... Uh, well, the latest iteration of our load cell system. Um, we have a load cell and the entire weight of the rocket rests on that load cell when we are when we have it vertical on the rail the idea is that as we fill it up with uh, liquid oxygen the rocket will get heavier and heavier and heavier and when we know what what the weight was to begin with we should know how much uh, lux we uh, we we add to the system um, the only thing is that that we have quite some fluctuations on those load cells and even in this iteration as well so uh, we're going to do a few, a few adjustments and see if we can get the, uh, get the uh, output swing down. We need to know how much locks we put in that rocket. Okay, we're all set up now and uh, we've just uh, modified the uh, load cell system and we got way better uh, uh, weight measurements now. Apparently, if we look over here, this vertical connecting rod was two to three degrees out of alignment when we rocked the rocket from side to side. Now we moved the load cell a bit so it's directly underneath the, uh, the, the, the point where it, it supports the rocket. And for some reason the, uh, the, the, the fluctuations went from plus minus five kilos down to about plus minus one and a half. So now we are close enough in, in, in the measurement, even when this rocket is hanging and, and thrashing around on the rail at sea, now we have sufficient quality measurements to, 
to determine how much uh, how much locks we uh, we load onto the rocket. And then I want to show you the other thing, uh, which is the launch flange, as we call it, and the modified uh, quick connectors we use for it. I just want you to ignore this one over here right now. That's just the one we use to load uh, liquid nitrogen today and liquid oxygen at sea. This one just be un uh, unscrewed and, and removed away, so don't, don't regard that one. The other ones, however, we have three other uh, modified uh, Parker quick connectors here, and they're modified in such a way that they cannot cling on to the counterpart uh, as the usual quick connector can. So the only thing holding these connectors together right now is actually the weight of the rocket. So this entire flange has been adjusted up and down so that it just almost rests on these quick connectors. There's just a, a millimeter or two of, of clearance between them. But it means that that the entire flange is designed to move underneath the rocket when it's swinging in the rail at sea. And what it also, also these, what these quick connectors do is that these are the ones we actually use to pressurize the rocket just before liftoff. So one is for the uh, LUX pressurization system. Uh, the pipe goes all the way up to the LUX tank. The other one over here, that's for the fuel tank. And it also goes all the way to the top of the rocket. And finally, we have the perch connector. That's the one we use to, to uh, vent excess fuel from the, uh, from the engine in case we somehow fill up the engine with fuel, but then have to abort. Then we just apply the perch uh, gas and we flush the entire engine from fuel so that we don't have a fire hazard. So Thomas is just going to demonstrate what's happening now. Uh, it has to be mentioned that these uh, quick connectors, they also feature an integrated check valve. So this check valve closes before it breaks connection with the counterpart. So right now, if, even if everything was, uh, was pressurized here and Thomas just lifts up the rocket. So what's going to happen now is that the rocket is going to take off and it's starting to lift and it just raises itself right off the uh, off the launch flange and is on its way just up oh so det meget langsommer yeah because I am out of fur uh, chewing. <laughs> Uh, during this uh, cold flow test, instead of using uh, liquid oxygen that we use as a fuel, we're using uh, liquid nitrogen. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one, it's inert, which means that uh, no matter what we do, we cannot get it to burn. And two, it's actually a little bit colder. So uh, we subject the, the rocket to a little bit more stress, thermal th stress, and it's uh, also a little bit cheaper. That's uh, the main reason why we, we use uh, liquid nitrogen instead of liquid oxygen. We have just completed a radio check to validate that we have connection from the rocket to the ground control system on all the radio channels as well. And everything looks fine. We have data from the engine controller on both radio links and uh, we have uh, telemetry data from uh, both of the radios on the rocket. Everything else is, t is turned off currently, so uh, everything is happy. Og vi ved, at vi skal bruge mere end 30 stykker, når vi flyver. Jeg tror faktisk, at
<laughs> Fucking <laughs> damn it. Ja, det kan næsten kun være der. Det, det, hvis du kigger ind her overfra. Ja. Og kigger ind. Der. Ja. Åh, oh, det ser sgu da ikke godt ud. Hvis du kigger derind i det, ja. det er hvad det hedder, spalten ja, der imellem. Ja, det Hvad har vi altså på at trykke? Hvad er vi oppe på at trykke, Scott? <coughs> jeg tror, vi tager skaldpæden af, så stopper vi. Vi også gør med en rækkefugle. Så varmer vi, til vi kommer op, så vi ikke kondenserer vand på skidtet. Så det siger, at der er en hel masse varmeblæser, inden vi kommer videre. Når så er vi kommet op i temperatur, så er det noget med, at så svinger du den ud, og så er det en frysepose på, og når det er You have to take that one out through that panel, just to get that little damn thing tightened. <laughs> This is uh, this is somewhere in the middle of the second cold flow test, and it looks like we only have two leaks left. Uh, we have one in uh, in the top of the LOX uh, tank, uh, just next to the vent valve. That's just a uh, threaded connection that that needs some uh, some new Teflon tape and a good tightening. Then that one should be done. Um, the other one is a bit more precarious. Um, it looks like it's the spindle seal on the uh, LOX main valve. Uh, it seemed to be completely tight for, I don't know, at least 15 minutes. We didn't notice anything, and that's why why we do these uh, cold soak tests because we do let it soak, and eventually it uh, leaks turn up if they're there. And we found one now in the uh, in the spindle seal of the main locks valve. So we're just gonna try and see if we can fix this on site. So we're just uh, pulling out one of the shell plates so that we can get to. Uh, to the to the locks uh, main valve and then we might just be able to tighten the spindle seal uh, just out here on on the rail so we'll see how that goes yeah. So we uh, we had a small leak on the locks valve. So Christian uh, just uh, opened it up. Um, when, when we had the tank at 10 bars uh, full of uh, full of nitrogen, we had a small leak for, uh, from the stem to the ball. And uh, so now Christian and Thomas took it apart to to check if there was anything incorrect inside it. But everything looks fine. So now we're just gonna close it back up and and tighten. Uh, the stem seal uh, as tight as we yeah. can and, and still turn the valve. So we hope that will uh, fix the small leak that we had. So we'll reinstall it and then we will uh, refill nitrogen and then we'll, we'll do the test once again. <laughs> Just tightening one of the clamp fittings here on top of the locks tank. Uh, we just had a little leak. Uh, it was actually between the Christmas tree and the vent valve. And uh, I just tightened that a couple of turns. And I'm just remounting the Christmas tree in, in the rocket. So it's like we should hopefully be able to do a, a second part of the, uh, of the um, cold flow test later this evening. Ja, 
jeg kan se, at der ikke er meget for det, mand. Ja, det er vi. It's getting later in the afternoon, actually, it's evening. Um, we've had the main locks valve out of the rocket, and we just went through the internal compression seals inside the this valve and we just looked it over we couldn't find anything wrong with it so we decided to to reassemble it just with a bit more uh, clamping force on the different seals that looks to have done the job and right now we can't really find any any leaks left on this rocket except some some very tiny seeping uh, nothing of consequence i'm a bit doubtful if we can get it completely 100% sealed. But right now we are not losing any liquid nitrogen anywhere and uh, and the, the, the leaks we might have, they are close to non-existent. Yeah, so we're done for today and it uh, it went okay for today. We do have a small leak still on the locks valve, so we'll need to take it apart again and uh, check the seals and um, and then we'll do a, a pressure and leak test on the valve itself without having it mounted on the rocket. Um, and we'll do that sometime next week and then we will uh, we'll try it again. And then when's the scheduled final long thing? Well, if we uh, get if that test is cleared, mm -hmm. then we won't be taking anything apart again. Next time it's for real. <laughs>